so welcome back guys to the course tutorial in this episode we're gonna be looking at um, conditions now conditions is something that um, if you're taking another course if you're just looking at another um, programming course they usually teach you that very early on but I've decided to wait a little bit I've decided to actually teach you some more stuff beforehand so um, here's my approach to it so we learn how to read code um, just like you read a book so you go from left to right then uh, lines by lines sometimes you get told jump to this chapter and come back to where you were. Um, conditions are going to make this a little bit more complicated. So let's go back and just make an example out of what we currently have. So let's just assume we have a clean script. There is nothing in here, um, not even comments. And uh, we are to declare ourselves our own function, not like we did before. So let's just say void say hello, just a function like that, right? And in that function, we would have a call that would say debug.log hello world now what happens is um, this code is never ran because we need to actually call this function from somewhere else from somewhere that is actually ran um, some kind of entry point so if we were to put that function in the start we know that say hello is going to be called once and we are going to get debug.log hello world so this we understand now if we put that in the update then every single frame we are rereading that very chapter every time. So we are rereading that function every single frame. So say hello would happen once per frame, 30 times a second if you're running at 30 frames a second. So this we understand, right? Um, we understand that if you write something here, so if say int i is equal to zero um, and you do a debug.log i, it's gonna write zero. If you go down here, you do i plus plus, you do another debug.log i, then this time it's going to write one because it goes in order. So right here, you run this first, you declare your field, you debug.log your field. So it actually says zero at this point. And then afterward, it says one. If you remove this, it's only going to say zero. So we'll never really know that I has become one. So we know that. So we know this, we actually know that uh, you read the lines from top to down and uh, just like an actual book. And sometimes you get asked to jump to a function. And once you're done with that function, you come back. That is simple. We understand this um, topic now what we are going to do today is talk about conditions because sometime um, you might have some condition in your code that says okay so you reach this point in the in the book um, now depending on this condition depending if this is true or false you are going to go to say chapter 4 or chapter 5 then come back and now we're going to write down our condition. So just have a look at this syntax. It is as simple as if, and then you open up some normal parentheses, and then you type the condition. Now the condition has to be a Boolean. So this condition has to be a Boolean, which means in the end, whatever you're going to write in here, um, whether it's like a full call or it's a function call, or it's just a normal Boolean or a hard coded parameter, just like true or false, it has in the end, it has to return a Boolean. We know about Boolean, we know that uh, you know it's an either um, true or false value. There can be nothing else but a true or false. Let's actually declare one right here. Let's say Boolean is um, going up. So we're gonna do something like that. It's going up, we're gonna be playing with the int value. Bool is going up, if it is true, um, we're gonna do something, and if it's false, we're gonna do something else. Let's have a look here. So we have our condition if, we're gonna say if it's going up, so if through in this case, we're opening up scope brackets, just like this, so those brackets. Now if going up is true, let's go ahead and take our i and do a plus plus on it. And then when we're once we're done, we're gonna do a debug.log and actually, actually write down um, our i value. So let's go back and read this um, quite slowly. We start by declaring two field. One of them is an integer and the other one is a boolean. Our integer is just a value, a random int value. Well, it's not really random. We, we're going to be setting that to zero. So it's a value containing zero. And then afterward, we're declaring a um, Boolean that is equal to true right now. Now, if that Boolean is true, if is going up is actually true, that could be something else. That could be, you could be writing down a true just like this, or you could be saying something like, um, you could be writing down a condition, which we will get to in a moment, just like, uh, i is equal equal to zero but let's go ahead and just use our value we declare so is going up so if we are going up we are going to be reading what is inside of the scope brackets so these brackets here 
we're actually going to go down in here and read those nine. However, if it is not true, if it's going up is actually false, we're simply just going to disregard this completely, just like if it never really exists, and we're going to go back to reading the rest of our function, which is going to just write down debug.log. So let's give this a try. I'm going to just go in here, um, discard those errors, they don't really matter. Have a look at the console down there. Once our game starts, we should get 1. The reason we get 1 is quite simple. It is because um, i is equal to 0, and then we do it if it's going up, which is true in this case, i++, plus plus, and finally we debug.log um, the new value. Now if we go ahead and just write false, we try this again, it's actually writing down 0, because the if statement was never ran, so this was completely discarded because is going up is actually false. Now let's do something else. Let's do a else value. So what you can do with code is um, if you have a condition, if condition like this, you can say if, say, is going up is true, then you run this code. And if it's not actually true, you can run some other code using the else statement with scope brackets, of course. So if it's not going up, let's do i minus minus. In this case, is going up is true, so this is going to be run. Let's say um, is going up is false, then this is not going to be run. However, the else statement is, which means we should get minus one in our console, and we do. Let's actually add a little bit of complexity to that. We are going to go in the is going up and actually call a function. So if you're going up, we're going to say hello at the same time. If you're not going up, we're simply going to say um, nothing. We're just going to do the i minus minus. In this case, is going up is equal to false, which means we only got the else statement. We only got this. However, if we go here and say is going up is equal to true, then in this case, it says hello world and then one. The reason it says hello world first is because we don't do a debug.log here. We only increment the value. Then we say hello world, we keep on going, and finally debug.log that value. So really, if, um, if is going up is true, only this exists, and if it's false, only this exists. All right, so I think we're getting the hang of it. Now let's talk about uh, some more conditions, because right now, as you can tell, is going up is true is something I've defined in my code. Why, why is that useful? It's really not useful right here, because, you know, um, there's no chances, if I just leave my code like this, there is no chances that the else is ever ran unless I manually change is going up to false, which is not something that should be happening in your game. You're not going to be there to actually modify your stuff um, for every single one of your player. So we're going to be talking about other condition. We're going to be talking about other way to create a, um, a Boolean out of what we have right now. Let's have a look at another way to do things. Um, we're going to be keeping our i++ plus plus in our i-. minus minus. So we are going to say if i is bigger than 0, this is actually converted into a boolean. So this call over here is actually a logical um, operation. And once this is done, so if i is bigger than 0, it's going to say either true or false. In this case, it's going to return false. Let's have a look why. Um, let's first have a look at the actual console, and it says minus one. Minus one means that uh, we've been in the else statement. Now i is not bigger than zero because i is actually zero right now. If you wanted to include i, you would have to say i is bigger or equal to zero. In this case, it would go ahead and just increment it. As you can tell, it now says one. So i is in fact bigger or equal to zero. It's equal to zero. Now, if you want to test against a very, very specific number, you can do that using the double equal statement. So i equal equal to 3, say. Um, so if i is equal to 3, then we're going to be running um, the first part of our if. And if it's not, we're going to be running the else statement. If you want to actually test um, the other way around, so you say i is not equal to 0, you can do so using the exclamation mark equal in front of it. So just like this, you're going to be checking. So if i is not equal to 3, in this case uh, is going to return true because i is equal to 0, then we run the first part of the if statement. 
Now the mistake that a beginner often do is um, they write it this way. They say i is equal to 3. So if i is equal to 3, then we run this. If it's not, it doesn't work. The problem with this is that you're actually assigning a value here. You're going to say i is equal to 3, which um, is going to overwrite the value of i. You're actually just assigning it. Just like um, if you were here, you would say i is equal to 3. You're just overwriting the value. This is not a condition. It is um, a statement that is going to assign the value. So you really got to be making sure that you use the double equal if you want to test a condition value, a logical statement. And also the exclamation mark equal if you want to test if it's not equal. And there's also other condition that I'm going to be introducing a little bit later on. I think we have enough right now um, in our blades to actually just digest. Um, but if I just throw them out there really quickly, there is a n statement and also a or statement written like this. So double ampersand or double pipe. Double ampersand means n, and um, it's just basically you test with two values. So if this part is true and this part is true, then the whole thing is going to equal true. If this part is true and this part is false, the whole, the whole thing actually becomes false. Now with the or statement, it's actually the other way around. So um, if one of these two things is true, then yes, it's going to be true. But like I mentioned, I'm going to be um, explaining them a little bit later on uh, when we're more in depth in conditions. Okay, so where is this useful? This is useful at a lot of places. We are going to have a look at um, just a value that bounces um, back and forth, and we're going to be doing that in the update. So let me just just delete all of this. Also delete the say hello. So to put that in practice, I'll be using three values here. The first one I will call it position x. The second one is going to be a boolean call is going right, and the third one is going to be a transform. Um, my transform. So. You probably guessed it already, we're going to be moving a transform using a condition. Okay, so what is going to happen here is I'm going to take my transform, I'm going to assign my transform. Now, if you remember how to do this, uh, we go and say the start, we say my transform is equal to get component type of transform. And at this point, we have access to the position, the rotation, and the scale of the object we're on. Now, this object would be, in this case, if I just remember um, correctly, would be this cube this only cube, so the one, um, this one, right? So we have the transform of this. Now, the other two value I have is a float called position x. It does not contain any value right now, so it's default at zero. And bool is going right, which also does not contain a value, so it's default at false. What I am going to do here is we are going to actually check, are we going right? So is going right, so if is going right, if we are going right, let's do position x plus equal 0.1f, which would mean um, if we're at 30 frames a second, that would mean 3 meters a second. And if we are not going right, we're going to say position x is minus equal to 0.1f. So we're either incrementing that value or decreasing that value. Just afterward, we're going to say my transform dot position is equal to say a um, a vector 3 dot right which means 1 0 0 times position x so we're taking a vector a unitary vector that points towards the right and just multiplying it by our float so if our float is at 50 positive 50 then our vector is going to equal 50 0 0 all right so let's try this out we're gonna have a problem with this but um, I just want to actually show this we have this value here um, that is always going left. And the reason it's always going left is because it's, you know, the is going right is really never toggled on. Now we're going to be taking this value. We're going to be looking at this value up here and we're going to be checking. So are you say um, past minus 10? If you are past minus 10, if you are actually past minus 10, then just switch your is going right around. We can do this. Um, say in both the if statement or we can do it just down here as well. So let's do if my transform dot position We're actually using our value in the if statement. So if my transform dot position dot X is smaller than uh, minus 10 this actually turns into a boolean because um, my position my transform dot position dot X is a float. We know it's a float. It's actually the float we see up here so this value 
Is it smaller than minus 10? If it is smaller than minus 10, let's actually say is going right is now equal to true. So let's swap that around. Is going right is actually going to equal true. And the next frame, when we rerun that update, then we're going to have a plus equal instead of having a minus equal. And um, just to do the same thing with the other side, we're going to do another if statement. My transform.position.x is bigger than, say, 10. If it's bigger than 10, then is going right is going to equal false because uh, we're past a certain, you know, we're, we're far enough towards the right. We just want to make sure that our cubes move toward the left. And we're going to have a look at this in the game. And I think that's going to be our very first mechanic we create together. And just have a look at this. So it's bouncing back and forth. With the grid, you can actually tell that this is minus 10 and this is plus 10. And here we go, guys. We have our very first mechanic using conditions. And this is only an introduction to conditions. We're going to have some more conditions. Um, this code you see here, we can actually put all of that in like about two lines. So as we learn more about condition, as we learn more about syntax, we're going to be just shrinking this down to something very simple we can read in like two lines. So guys, I hope you enjoy. I hope you learned something. And if you did, please uh, leave a like on the video. Please also support me on Patreon, on the Facebook page, just anywhere you want, really. And um, I'll, be, I'll be making more course if you do. So um, thanks so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Cheers.